well, I made it out here to the coast. Still about an hour before low tide, but water's already out of ways, so I'm gonna go try to rake some cockles. All right, and here's my high-tech gear, a rake and a bucket. So that should be all we need. We're gonna go give it a try. A rock. There's one. It's a nice cockle. Perfect. Great way to start. All right, I just uncovered this little guy. I don't want to hurt him. Here you go, buddy. Okay, well, I raked and raked and raked like a crazy person. And then I ended up with two cockles. <laughs> Not very impressive. That's one tenth of a limit of cockles. So I decided to wander away a little bit and dig for gapers. And what felt like about a mile down, I just dug up this one. Nice big gaper clam. So that's awesome. I wasn't expecting to dig gapers today. Didn't really bring any shovel or glove or anything, so I just dug it with my bare hands, but that's awesome. I'll rinse it off, give you another look. He's a monster, that's a big one. So if I get one or two more like that before it gets too late, that's great. So check this out. Right over there is where I dug the first gaper. And right here is another one. I think it's even bigger than the last one. Look at the size of this clam. It's huge. So this is great. The tide's starting to turn, so I'm going to dig as many as I can. Well, within the legal limit, of course, but <laughs> probably I'll get tired before I get there. But I'm going to try to dig a few more. Super excited about this. That is awesome. Okay, well I made it back to the cleaning station. Here's the clams. I'm not going to do much to those now other than throw them in the cooler. I uh, have a first aid kit in the car, which is great, but it's in the other car. So I think there's a lesson in there somewhere. All right, I made it back home. I'm all ready to clean those clams. Um, I, I still don't know how I managed to hurt myself quite this badly on just a gaper clam. Um, you know, I used to dig them barehanded all the time. And yeah, you'd get a few minor cuts and, and your nails would get a little bit buggered up, but I've never had something quite this severe. I mean, I actually cut the nail about halfway down. So just happened to be, uh, I guess, bad luck the way I reached in there or something like that. So anyway, it'll be fine. But yeah, what I'm going to do now is go get those clams. I'll show you what we got and then I'll show you how I prepare them. So here we are, two cockles and four really nice gaper clams. Let's take a look at the cockles first. This is a great size. I've definitely found larger, but as far as just eating goes and a good size for harvesting, this is perfect. This one's a little bit smaller, but definitely worth keeping. Um, I clean these in a really different way than I do the gaper clams. And since I don't have time to do everything tonight, what I'm gonna do is just keep these in the fridge. They're really cool creatures, really thick shelled. They're very resilient. So they'll, they'll keep a long time if you know how to do it. You definitely don't wanna put them in water. I know it seems a little counterintuitive, but Water, and especially fresh water, is really bad. Um, they'll just run out of oxygen. They won't last very long. So instead, you just want to put them in a, like a bowl in the fridge, cover them with a damp paper towel, and they'll last for a long time that way. So I'm going to take care of these. We'll put them away, and then I'll show you what I do for the gapers. Okay, so I went ahead and set the other gaper clams aside for now, just so we could focus on this one. I'll do my best to work around the camera to show you what I'm doing. When I got into clamming, it was a lot of fun, but there just wasn't much information out there about how to actually clean these things. And it's especially important to me because, you know, I always want to be respectful of anything I harvest. And a huge part of that is not wasting any meat, making sure we use absolutely everything we can. So what we're going to do is go ahead and clean this clam. I'll show you how I do it. And I try to maximize, again, what I can use from this. So a little bit about clam biology. Um, there are two muscles, and one's right about here, and one's right about here. And those are called adductor muscles. Those are what pulls the clam together. 
And so basically what we want to do, and again, I'm not sure how this will go working around the camera, but we want to go ahead and try to slip our knife as close to the shell as possible and cut those muscles, right? And if you've ever eaten a scallop, I mean, that's what that is. It's that muscle. And so what we want to do is try to work around and cut this one, cut this one, and then on the other side, just sliding our knife right along the shell so that we're not cutting into the clam itself and not wasting that meat. Okay, one more thing before I start this. Um, there's a little crab called a pea crab, and they live inside gaper clams. I believe that they're not really parasitic, they're more symbiotic. I, I, I'm not sure about that, but I've cleaned hundreds of gaper clams, and I've honestly never cleaned one that didn't have a crab living in it. So sometimes people get freaked out, you know, oh, is the meat bad? Is that a problem? You know, this crab was living inside the clam. Nope, perfectly natural. It's just, uh, just how they are. So, you know, just something to expect if you're gonna clean one of these clams. But let's go ahead and, and get to it. All right, so again, we're gonna try to slip the knife in and cut that adductor muscle right there. The water comes out. Okay, and I'll try to do the same thing on the other side. Again, keeping that knife right next to the clam. Okay, and at this point, I've cut the two, you know, two ends of the adductor muscle in the back. So if my thumb didn't hurt so much, this would be a lot easier, but oh gosh, it's gonna be hard. Oh, and there's our little crab. See this little guy coming out? So I'm gonna dump him in the sink, or in the bucket, I should say. And I'll be right back, hang on. Okay, I'm back. So, um, as you can see, I've cut that muscle on this side. I've cut through it on this side. And now I'm just gonna work my knife up along this edge. Again, being careful not to ruin any of the meat. And now, here's, here's my method. I've never heard of anybody else doing this, but it's just how I do it. I'm actually gonna pull the shell apart a little bit, trying not to break it. We're gonna push this neck kind of down in like that. And that gives me a nice clear path to cut these, this other adductor muscle on both sides. So we're gonna do that, like that. And here on the other side as well. And now I should be able to separate the clam from the shell. And I can, almost. There we go. Okay, that's it. I understand if it doesn't look very appetizing, hope you're not too squeamish, but that's that. So now I can see these scallop muscles right here and rinse off my hands a little bit first because I got some sand on them, hang on. Okay, so this muscle right here, I can just pop right out. This is the adductor muscle, in other words, the scallop, and it is absolutely delicious. By the way, now is a good time to tell you, there's only one way that you can cook these clams in a way that'll ruin them, and that's to overcook them. My advice for that is think about how long you want to cook this and then divide that number by at least two. I've actually eaten these raw. I can't say I condone that, I don't know if that's healthy, but you're not going to undercook it. Um, it's just not going to happen. So if you overcook it, it will taste like you're trying to eat a rubber band. They're almost impossible to chew. But if you just barely cook it, no matter what you're doing, it's delicious. So you definitely want to save these scallop muscles. I mean, they're not really scallops, they're adductor muscles from a gaper clam, but I call them scallops. One right here, set that aside, and then another one on the other side. Uh, there it is. Here's our other little scallop muscle. So, um, again, these are delicious, so don't waste them. Okay, now what we do, and I'm getting a little flood here, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> Here's the foot. On a cockle, for example, this siphon is tiny and the foot is huge. There's almost no meat in this, and all the meat's here. Gaper's kind of the opposite, but there's still some meat in the foot, so what you want to do is go ahead and cut that off. And that's another part that's definitely edible and definitely quite good. And then the bulk of the meat is here in this siphon. So what we want to do is kind of separate this meat from the rest of the clam. And like that. And then we'll cut it right about here. Again, I understand this doesn't look that delicious, but trust me, it'll make an amazing clam chowder. Now what we're gonna do is just, there's, there's actually two tubes in this siphon. So we're gonna slip our knife in and just cut it right through like that. There we go, one and two. And there we go. 
So I'll wash this up a little bit along with those other bits and I'll tell you what we do next. Okay, so I've rinsed off this siphon a little bit, got it all ready to go, it's all edible, it's really, really good, except for this skin that's on the outside, kind of this tough outer skin. And if you try to peel it off now, yeah, it's really a pain. It's, it breaks apart, it's hard, it kind of you know tears up the meat, it's really annoying. And I always struggled with that until one day I met this old guy out at the coast and he taught me a trick. He said, don't take it off now, go ahead and throw this in the freezer. And then when you take it out, when you're ready to cook your clams, that skin will peel right off. You know, after it's thawed, of course. And lo and behold, he was right. So that's how I do it every time. It works great. So all I do, I don't do any more cleaning right now. Go ahead and take this. I put the foot with it. That's great meat too. And I freeze it just like this. Put it in a Ziploc bag, along with the rest of them. Stick it in the freezer, and you're good to go. As far as these mussels, um, I call them scallops, even though, you know, technically they're not from a scallop. They're from a caper clam. But as far as these go, I usually don't freeze these. Um, what I do is just save them. I'll put them in the fridge tonight. Tomorrow I'll fry them up as a little bitty appetizer. And uh, they're great. Just fry them up in a little bit of oil and butter. Again, just barely cooking them. You're basically just kind of searing the outside and that's it. And they are delicious. I think they taste every bit as good as a, a scallop. So it's a great part of the meat. You definitely don't want to waste it. Okay, that's how I do gaper clams. All right, well, it's the next day, and I'm here in my kitchen getting ready to show you how I cook these cockles. So before I do that, since it's a new day, I'll go ahead and do a gear check. I'm wearing my Seiko 5 Sports. Been wearing this watch a lot lately. I really, really like it. And for my knife, I've got something new. This is a Spyderco Dragonfly 2 Salt. And it's perfect for things like going out clamming because it's resistant to salt water, won't rust, and... Being that it's a Spyderco, really good quality, razor sharp, also works as a pointer, so I can show you some features of these cockles. Um, just like the gaper clams, there's these adductor muscles, there's two of them, one right about here, and one right about here, and those are what the clam uses to hold together. Um, we could clean these raw, but I've found it works a lot better, just go ahead and steam them. So we'll get a nice rolling boil going, cover this up, get the steam going, and pop the cockles in there, It'll only take three or four minutes if we just check periodically, and you'll know when they're done because they'll pop right open. So it's pretty simple. Um, normally, of course, you'd hope to have more than two, but that's okay. It'll, it, for illustration purposes, it'll work just fine, and we don't want to waste the meat. Um, as a matter of fact, we can even save the water that's left over and use that as stock for making clam chowder. But Okay, enough about that. Let's get to it. Nope, not yet. All right, let's take a look. Oh, yep, they're done. As soon as they pop open, we call it good. All right. It really works easily when you do it this way. Um, once they pop open, the clam pretty much just slides right out. You don't need to do any cutting to get it out of the shell. But let's take a look at one of these. So here it is, here's what you get. Um, kind of the opposite of a gaper, because the foot, which is relatively small on a gaper, is huge on a cockle, and the siphon, right there, is almost non-existent. So you, you still get a lot of meat, but you're kind of eating a different part of it. We still have these adductor muscles. There's one right here. I'll cut that out in a second. Well, actually, I can probably just pop it out. There we go. And I can do it without my, my thumb getting in the way. So there's one of those kind of scallop muscles. Another one right here. And all we're going to do is get rid of this stuff, and that's obviously not food, or not food you want to eat. And then what we're going to do is just go ahead and slice this, and I just kind of slice it right in half, like this. Whoops. Being careful not to cut my already injured thumb. Okay. And then as we go through it, all we're going to do is just kind of remove this dark part, like this. You can just use your fingers for that, if you don't mind. Sorry about the noise in the background, it's just my children. Hold on you guys, I'm almost done making my movie. And kind of hard to work around the camera and do this, but we're just gonna remove this stuff. I'm gonna go rinse this off and show you a little better image of it, but, and that's all. And then this whole part is edible, very, very good. Again, keep in mind with clams, the only way to really ruin it is to overcook it. So let me get this rinsed off and I'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, so here you have it. There's the two scallop mussels, and then 
this is what you end up with. A nice piece of meat from that cockle. Really, really good tasting. You can freeze it, it'll be just fine, or you can go ahead and chop it up right now if you're gonna make chowder and you'll be all set. All right, anyway, thanks for sticking with me through this and watching this. I had a lot of fun making it and showing you all this. Um, this injury kind of sucked, but otherwise it was fun. Hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, I'll see you next time.